Welcome to a new video from Excel Data Analysis Series PQB Power Query Basics Video PQB02 Extract data from the same workbook In this video we are going to see how we can get data from an unnamed range How we can get the same from a named range And finally how we can get the data from a table During the video we are going to discuss how we can delete columns And how we can delete other columns How we can create a dynamic unique list via removing duplicate rows And also how we can delete or change applied steps And finally how we can combine query output with Excel functions. If you want to follow along while watching the video or even if you want to practice after watching the video please go down in the description section you will find the link please use it to download the Excel file and also use the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified with the new videos. In our practical example today we have the monthly sales from AAA Bike Shops books it comes in three columns month product and sales value you can notice that we have three months january february and march and you can see the month represented by the last date of the month and also you can see i have three copies from the same data first one i put it in a named range called q1 if you use the drop down in the name box you will find that i have a range called bikes q1 if you select you can see here is the range named bikes q1 and also i have the same data but in unnamed range and also a copy in a table and i give a name to this table the name is bikes and you can see i have two requirements first one is to create a summary by product to do this we have to create a unique list of the products and also i need to create another summary but by month and in this case i want to create a unique list for the month and also i have the q2 sales it's here it's the other three months for q2 and i want to update the data and see if i can update this automatically without redoing any of the steps that we are going to do now so let's start with the first set of data that we have in the named range bikes q1 and while selecting any cell inside this data set i'm going to use the data ribbon on the left hand side I have my power query section so I'm going to select this icon the small table here if you hover on it you'll see from table or range I'm going to click on this it will launch the power query editor and a new query will be created if you look at the right hand side you will see that the query inherited the name of the range so the name of the query is bikes q1 i have the source here the first step in the applied steps and other two steps applied automatically by excel i'm going to delete them look at this i can just use this red cross and i can just delete the same here the red x i can just delete and let's start to do all the work manually if you look at the data it comes here in three columns and 13 rows however the first row is the header so i want to use the first row to be the header instead of column one column two and column three so in order to do this i'm going to go to the home ribbon and from home ribbon in the transform section i'm going to select use first row as header once you click it will promote your first row to be a header so in this case in this query i need just the name of the product so i don't need uh, either the month or the sales value i can just select the month and from remove column i can just delete i can select the sales value right click and also remove and now i have the product name only and you can see removed columns a step created here in the applied steps however there is another way i can do this i can just again delete this step uh, via the red x and the columns will come back again for sure don't worry I can, I can play with the data as much as i want because this is a read only version of the data your original data is still in the named range in the excel however this is a read only version of your data so let me select the column i want which is the product name i can just right click and i'm going to select remove other columns this is very helpful if you have a lot of columns and you need just few columns now the last step is to create 
the unique list via removing the duplicates while selecting the column product name I can just go to reduce rows and from remove rows just select the small arrow and remove duplicates exactly like what I have in Excel now the table reduced to a small list of four rows now my query is ready I can just load it I can go to home close and load close and load to it will open the dialog box asking you where you want to load your data I can select existing worksheet and cell F5 and I want it in a table there's some other options we'll discuss later but for now let's use table and I'm going to select OK it will create a new table and you can see the queries and connection pane opened and I have one query with four rows loaded now I want to create my summary so I can add a column here I can call it sales and enter you will see the table will be expanded like any other normal table I can use a quick sum ifs to create my summary my sum range will be the sales value and I'm going to use f4 to fix the reference comma my criteria range will be the product again f4 to fix the reference and finally my criteria will be the product name in the new table close the brackets and enter if you use this small icon you can just overwrite all cells in this column and it will copy the formula till the end quickly you can select the, this small column and go to home and you can do a quick number formatting okay now you have your unique list created you have your summary using the sum if let's try to do the same in the unnamed range set of data while selecting any cell again I'm going to use the same button from data get and transform and this icon once I click on this it will open the create table dialog box I should click on OK it will open again the power query editor however it will give an automatic name for the query and this is something I don't want because it will give a name like table 1 table 2 and if you want to change it later it will not be easy because it will spoil the source of the query so I'm going to cancel this and advise you before loading anything to power query from the same workbook please give it a name or the best way is to put it in a table and now let's do the same for the table data set while selecting any cell inside the table I'm going to use again the same button from get and transform area in the data ribbon once I click on it it will launch the power query editor on the right hand side you can see that the name of the query inherited from the table and I have two applied steps first one is the source we cannot delete it's just getting the data or getting the table from the excel and the other one change type i'm going to use the red x to get rid of it and if you look the at the data it comes here the three columns and only 12 rows why because the headers already in place and why because the table has headers and the column names in the query inherited from the table as well and this is very good because it reduces the steps required to transform your data if you are getting the data from a table so now in in this time i don't need the products i don't need the sales value so i'm going to select the month right click remove other columns you can see now i have the month it comes here with this icon meaning that the type of the data is any i want to change to date just click on this icon and select date now i want to have a unique list of the dates while selecting the column i'm going to remove rows and select remove duplicates now i have a unique list of the month three months i am ready to load my data close and load close and load two same same i'm going to use the same dialog box existing worksheet and table i'm going to q5 this time and okay it will create a new table and if you look here i have another query created called bikes with three rows loaded i can now do the same i can add a column called sales a quick sum ifs formula to calculate the summary of the sales this time my sum range is the same 
it coming from the table you can see here I can just select the header and it will put the header name and it will use it in the formula and I have a video about this subject how to use the headers of the columns if you are using tables in the formula I will leave the link in the comment if you want to review and also on the top of the screen you will see a link you can use it to go directly to this video comma and then I need the criteria range this time is the month and I want the criteria comma this time is the month in the other table close the brackets and enter quick number formatting and double click and you have your summary ready so now I want to update the data and see what will happen so I have here the query uh, depends on the named range and I have here the query depends on the table and I have here Q2 sales let's take copy from it and go down here in Q1 sales and control V and what I'm expecting is once I refresh this it will update everything from where can I refresh this I can just select any cell inside this table the table extracted from the query right click and refresh or I can just go directly to the queries and connection pane and refresh when I do this it will refresh but actually nothing happened what do you think why nothing happened because the named range is not a dynamic range and if you try to select the bikes q1 from here it will stop only at row 17 and all the data below is not considered as part of the query this is not the only problem the other problem that if you check your sum if function here it's also stop at the same place and that's why your information will not be updated so let's try to take another copy of the data and go in the right hand side in the query depending on a table I will go to the first empty cell control V you can see the table expanded automatically and because the table expanded automatically the query also will be updated automatically so if I select the query from the query pane and I refresh you can see now I have six months instead of uh, three months and my data updated automatically that's why I do recommend that if you are going to get any data from the same workbook it's better to put it in a table format because this will help you to update your data automatically that's all for today if you didn't subscribe yet to the channel please do like the video and leave a comment because I'm reviewing the comments and responding to your feedback thank you very much for your time and see you in next video and bye